Hey there, this is Jonathan, and in the following set of tutorials, we're going to take a look at magazine layout using Adobe InDesign 2018. Now, I have just a couple sample documents that are open here, and these are ones that they give you for free, but it kind of covers the basic things that we'll be dealing with, um, which is placing photos and using type, using styles. Um, here you can see We've got some columns going on here. This is a three column design that's being used. And we have some page information as well, which is kind of interesting page variables. Um, here's another three column one, and this is a single column with a placed graphic. Um, we've separated our text out in a hierarchy of what's a title and a headline. We've got a drop cap over there. So there's a lot of features that you can see by looking at some of the templates that they provide for you. And here's a nice one that kind of shows some of the basics that we're going to do as well. Here you can see that we have a cover page or a lead page for our articles. Sometimes you call it a section start page. Um, and we have a title and a subtitle. We have a deck or lead. This is our first paragraph. And then we have the body of our article. They've chosen to indent the different paragraphs here, but we'll look at some other options for that. And they've placed them some images and they have a pullout quote that's being used as well. I want to look very quickly also at the fact that this particular document actually has bleed in here. And you can see that we have the three columns and then this one goes across um, that in a kind of non traditional way. Here you can see we have the columns that are matching the text quite easily. Um, and if we were to go on with the document, um, you might see some other variations. Here's where we have some text over the top of another graphic. Um, and that graphic is used to kind of cut into a photo or um, an image that would be placed in the background. So we'll be looking at some of the skills that go into this, but I also want to go over and look at another document. This is another very similar document. It's a page layout, but this one is meant as an iPad application or um, a digital publishing um, type project. And so that's something that you can also see some templates for in InDesign, they give you some of these as well. So let's go ahead and close any documents that you might have open, and we're gonna get on with creating our page layout. But before we do, I'm gonna take a look at what page layout is all about. Now, we are um, in a world where we have lots and lots of columns, but when they first started doing design, they would start off with maybe just one column, like an illuminated manuscript. When you open up Word or a desktop publishing application, you'll notice that it only has the one column, and then you have to add in those other features. Well, desktop publishing is always required that we use multiple columns because we have a lot of elements that are going on there. And so we need the flexibility to use different columns at different times and, and just play with our design. And so by, by having a more um, complete grid system than just one big column down the page, we can offer that. Um, here you can see an example of three columns where they're using two columns for the body text and they have a little call out over on the left hand side. And they've even chosen to separate the, the space um, vertically as well, which is kind of nice. Here's an example of four columns where you can see they're going across three and then they have three small columns. And then here's an example of what's called the 12 column grid system. Now, the benefit of the 12 column grid system is that you can separate this into lots of different columns. You can separate it into six, four, three, two, and even one. And then, of course, you can separate any of the other columns in any way. And this is what enables us to do more extreme design and play with um, how we want to move our objects around the page. So we're going to set up a similar thing in Adobe InDesign. Let's create a new document. And in this, we're going to go over to our print settings. Now we have print, web, and mobile that we might be able to use. But I'm going to choose to use the typical letter size. Now over on the right hand side, you may immediately notice that your numbers don't make sense because you might be in PICAs and that's because a lot of people do like to work in PICAs. The way PICAs work is you've got six PICAs per an inch. Um, and so that um, is uh, basically the same thing as we go over to here. 
you'll see that we have eight and a half inches and that equals 51 picas. Um, most people just don't think in picas in the United States. So we tend to think about inches. So I'm going to stay with that myself. Now, we also have the ability to do pages and we do want to know whether or not we want facing pages or spreads. I know that I'm going to want four pages, but I'm just going to just start off with two pages for right now because I'm just going to do one spread first and then I'll, I'll add my pages when I need them. Now, the next thing we have are margins, and I can keep those as they are. I'm not going to really worry about those. And then I've got my bleed and slug. I know that I want graphics to go over the edge of this brochure. So we definitely need to add in some bleed. And so I'm going to add just one click, which is an eighth of an inch to that. Slug, we're not going to worry about right now. That's something for a printer, and we're not really concerned with that. So let's create that. And we now have our typical document. Now, looking over on our right, you might notice that I'm in the Essentials workspace, and it's really not got a lot of stuff going on. And what I want to do is I want to go to my own custom setup. And so here's where we go. If we look over at the typography, and then I'm going to reset this so it's back to its default, you'll see that this actually has a lot of different panels that's open and you can or available. And you can click on any of these panels to open up them. And uh, I actually like a lot of these panels, but I don't use all of them and I want to add a couple more. So I'm going to mess with these a little bit. And so the way I'm going to mess with them is I'm going to take glyphs and take that one down to the bottom. Um, I'm going to take out the story and hyperlinks, just make that float, because I actually want to put those together with something different. I'm going to put my effects in with, uh, let's see, I want to add window styles, object styles, and add that underneath my gradient and stroke. And I'm going to add effects in with the object styles. And I'm going to get rid of the story and hyperlinks. Don't really need that for right now. Um, let's see. And I think that's really it. The only other one I'm not going to use is the CC libraries, even though I love it. Since we use device licensing in our classrooms, we're not able to use it. So anyway, I have pages, layer swatches. Um, I might even put the swatches down with the stroke settings and gradient because they kind of do relate to that. They're kind of related in a way. And then I've got object styles and effects, which are related paragraph and paragraph styles, character, character styles, and glyphs and text wrap. And we want to close those all and create a new workspace and call this the DME setup. At this point, take a screenshot. Yep, I'm going to replace what I got. Take a screenshot. Oh, there is one more. I knew that I wanted links. That's the other one that I was going to bring in. And I'm going to put that up there with the pages. Now I will resave this as my DME setup. And you'll see that you can always replace an existing workspace. What's great about that is if I ever move things around or change this thing in any way, I can always go back and reset back to that workspace. And I'm right back where I started. All right, now that we have a single page and we've got our panels set up the way that we're going to use them in our tutorials, let's go over to pages and take a look at what we got here. Now we've got two pages and I really want to move these into a spread. In order to do that, I need to go up to the top and click off this check mark for allow pages to shuffle. Now if I go back, you'll see it's off and now I can click and drag these pages. Now I'm going to zoom up a little bit just so you can see what's going on. When you start to drag your images or your pages, be very careful about the icon that you get because you don't have that far to move between one and another. And you want to make sure that you have the right icon to be able to put those two pages next to each other. And so just be careful of that as you're moving around your pages. If not, you might accidentally get two pages on one side of the spine, or maybe you might get them separated as two separate pages. And you can always get them um, to next to each other if you just fiddle with it long enough. So I've got my two pages here. And so I want to start adding some columns or guides or something else to my page. So I'm going to go up to the layout menu. And uh, let's see which page am I on. I'm going to go click on page one first. I'm going to go out to layout, margins and columns, and I'm going to start to add in a few different columns. Now, notice that it only has that left-hand page selected, not the right-hand page as well. If you wanted to have both selected, 
then you would you would need to select both, then go back up to your margins and columns and add in your three columns here. Now with the three columns, I'm going to go ahead and click OK and just leave those as they are for right now. And uh, what I'm actually going to look at is doing a little bit more interesting um, design actually using a new feature that was put in a, a little bit ago called create guides. Now the thing about it is I already know that when I create these guides it's going to actually be on these pages themselves and I want it to go across the entire document. So it actually behooves us to learn about what's called the master page immediately. If you double click on the master page you'll notice that it changes your view a little bit. You don't see the columns anymore. And that's because this is going to set up the presets for the rest of the document. So I'm going to select both master pages by holding down the shift key, go over to the layout menu, bring up create guides, and I'm going to create a more extreme guide system by doing maybe uh, eight rows and six columns and I'm going to leave the rest of the stuff there, but I will do want to fit the guides to the margins, not to the page. And you can see I almost have squares. Um, I could just change that down to six. Actually, that I think that might be a little bit better just to have it set to six and six. I'm going to leave the gutters and everything as they are. <clears throat> I'll click OK, and you'll now see that um, that page is now um, done. And if we double click back on the other pages, you'll see that now I get to see both the columns and the uh, guides. Now, one thing to point out if I go back to my master page is that you could move these guides if you wanted to. So be very careful of that. You don't want to accidentally move them. Um, if you want to lock them, you can always click on right click and choose lock guides but since i jump to another page and i'm not on the master page anymore anyway those guides are automatically locked so that's a really nice feature to know about <clears throat> now that we have our basic page layout we're going to actually begin putting in the graphics so stop here download the zip file with all the graphics that you need and let's go on to the next tutorial